the Kineni River. Its source in the well-watered highlands of Angola flows westwards before emptying into the Atlantic Ocean. For some 200 kilometers, the river forms a natural border between Angola and the northwestern parts of Namibia. The area to the south of the river is known as the Koerkefeld, an area sparsely populated by some 6,000 Overhimba who are descendants of the Herrera. In the Himba language, the word Kaoka means the left-hand side of the river. It is here, in this wilderness area, that many still live their semi-nomadic existence, herding their cattle and goats. Depending on the time of the year, they move their herds from one source of water to another. While the Kaneni forms the border between Angola and Namibia, the Hemba may freely cross from one country to the other to keep up family ties and to take their cattle across for grazing. Clothing, hairstyle and jewellery are all of particular significance to the Himba culture and tradition. Teenage boys wear bachelor pigtails which indicate that they are still single. Young girls wear their hair in two thick braids that drape over their faces. Even from an early age, the children are adorned in the traditional way. And every morning the striking Himba women take several hours to complete their beauty routine. The entire body is rubbed with a mixture of rancid butterfat and ochre powder, which gives their skin that distinctive, intense reddish shine that is so admired. Recreational pursuits for the Himba are as simple as the lifestyle they live, a lifestyle that for all its deprivation still produces music and song from the heart. Cattle are a sign of wealth. And when a rich man or head man dies, his family often slaughter dozens of his strongest animals. And their skulls are used to decorate the man's grave as a sign of his status. The graves are sacred places, just like the holy fire. The holy fire is often just a smouldering log. Strangers cannot walk between the fire and the headman's hut without first asking permission. The Makalani palm is a typical tree species of the Koerkefeld, especially on the banks of the Kuneni River. The Himba extract sap from the trees and use it to brew an alcoholic drink. The process, however, is not without casualties as the palms soon die and only bare stumps remain. Small riverbeds are usually dry. Here one finds example of the huge anna trees. In the more arid regions, vegetation is sparse. But in the spring, some plants display the most beautiful of flowers.
Away from the Kaneni, water is scarce. Natural water holes and boreholes must be well maintained in order to provide the precious life-giving fluid so essential for survival. Large tracts of the Kaoka felt are still unexplored and undeveloped. But the region now finds itself on the brink of an era of unprecedented change, as modern and numerous four-wheel drive vehicles have made access to the area possible. The increasing number of tourists has contributed to the erosion of traditional lifestyle and values amongst the Himba. The Kaoka Felt is now a haven for four-wheel drive enthusiasts, nature lovers and those who enjoy camping out under the open sky and in comparatively unspoilt wilderness. A highlight for the off-roader is the Fonsales Pass. Approaching it from the east, one has to negotiate some 30 kilometers of rough road. Careful driving is essential to avoid damage to the vehicle. At the top of the pass, the strain of driving is rewarded with an overwhelming view over the Marienfluss Valley. The sun-kissed golden grass plains of the valley, so typical of Namibia, give to one a sense of warmth. Here you will also find the so-called fairy circles circular patches without any vegetation at all. There are several unproven theories that have been offered to explain these circles, but some who are not convinced are happy to give the credit to the fairies. Following the Kineni River westwards, the landscape becomes even more desolate and less populated. Magnificent as it is, the area can be harsh, but life still exists. Plants and animals, small and large, have adapted to the conditions and do survive.
The unique desert-dwelling elephants have adapted to the arid environment in which they live. Walking up to 80 kilometers a day, they depend on an intimate knowledge of their range for survival. The Kaoka land elephant population has declined from 300 in 1970 to between 50 and 60 a few years ago, all the result of poaching and competition with humans for land. Strict control measures have been implemented and the number is once again increasing. One is drawn back to the river, where the Apupa Falls attract tourists from far and wide. The Namibian government has plans to build a hydroelectric dam just downstream from the falls, and it would effectively cause the breakdown of the Himba's economic foundation, their culture and social organization. There is always the possibility that thousands of outsiders, such as construction workers, will bring with them new health risks which would further impact the well-being of the Himba. Their religious practices would be directly affected. Many sacred places like graves and fireplaces, as well as this fascinating landmark, would disappear. Many hope that these plans never become reality, so that the left-hand side of the river is given a chance to remain the last pristine wilderness of Namibia.